This video is sponsored by Voto AI. For a while now, I've been using a particular software to retouch a lot of my commercial work. And I've found that it's cut down my time retouching significantly. It's really helped my workflow overall and actually brought me back time to be focusing on other things. Now, the software that I'm talking about is Avoto AI, and I have talked about it on my channel before. But in today's video, we're going to be doing more of a comprehensive walkthrough of a lot of the retouching features that Avoto offers. And we'll go through why using Avoto can really cut down your time when and retouching. And I'll be going a little bit more in depth with some of the features as well, so you'll be able to see how it can fit into your own workflow. Now, for those of you who are new here, hi, my name is Kaylee, and I'm a beauty and fashion photographer based near Sydney, Australia. I've been running this channel for around 10 years now, and here we talk about everything photography and retouching related. And before we get into this video today, I'm just going to mention a few important points. We are going to quickly just talk about how Evoto AI actually works as a platform. So Evoto actually gives you free access to all of the features within the software and you can use these at any point. You do not have to pay to use those features. There are no subscriptions or outright fees that you need to pay before using the software. It's also always free to update to the latest version, which is another plus. Now, the way that payments actually work for the service of using Avoto AI is actually only based on exports. So if you export an image, then you would pay for that export. You'll only get charged when you export a photo and you won't get charged for exporting exporting that photo more than once. So Evoto uses a flexible credit system where one credit equals one export. So each credit only costs between four and seven cents and the more that you buy, the cheaper they get. Now I understand that some people might be a little bit hesitant with a payment model like this, but personally, I feel that this really works for me in my commercial photography business because I find that I can really easily work this into my fees that I'm charging my client, especially when it's charging per photo because I also charge my clients per photo. So I find that it's a really easy way to work that in. It really is just another alternative to a subscription model and a subscription model I understand is not everyone's cup of tea either. And I definitely think there's a lot of people out there who feel that they're paying for a subscription that they're not always using. So the fact that you're only paying per export with this particular model is something that I actually really like. It really is a great time saving platform that has been designed for professionals. And as I mentioned, I really do use this in a commercial sense for my clients clients these days. So when I am doing my professional retouching, it's an easy thing to work into my final figures and it is going to cut down my time significantly. Now, if you'd like to try out Evoto for free, I do have a link down in the description box below, which is offering 30 free credits. So if you want to go and try out Evoto for yourself and try editing and exporting some of the images, you can do that with those 30 free credits below. So those free credits are for new signups and they are valid for one month from the registration date. So now we've talked a little bit about how Evoto works. Works. I'm now going to get straight into the walkthrough and I hope you enjoy. So we're now in Avoto AI and I'm going to start with some basic adjustments just to kind of get the image looking a little bit better before we jump into skin retouching and color grading. And I would usually do it this way with any of my images. I would start off with just doing any basic corrections like lighting, uh, making sure there's not too much contrast or too little contrast for that matter, and making sure as well that the image just generally looks sharp. So you can see that the interface might be a little bit familiar to you. We do have a lot of the main adjustments here like exposure, contrast, highlight, shadow, etc. And usually I would adjust the temperature of the shot. So I'm just going to move that a little bit more to the cool side. I just feel like the tint needs to come a little bit more over to the green. It was just looking a little bit warm. Color balance was just a little bit off and there is just a little bit of redness in the skin that I want to minimize a bit more. So again, we're just going to maybe bring down the highlights just a little bit here. I don't want there to be too many overexposed areas and it was just looking a little bit hot just in some of the areas around on the highlights there. Okay, and then just kind of adding maybe a little bit of contrast and if we bring the exposure just slightly down it's just going to give that little bit more depth back to the skin tone there so just holding down the space bar for a before and after you can see there that we've just kind of cooled down the photo a little bit and the skin's just looking a little bit more neutral now. I'm also just going to pop the clarity up just a little bit here. And for now, we're going to leave the adjustments as is before we move into skin retouching and then onto color grading. So I'm going to now jump into skin retouching and I'm gonna show you a couple of the features that I really find are pretty incredible within Evoto AI that will save you a lot of time when it comes to your beauty retouching. I find that the blemish removal option 
options and the dodge and burn options really, really cut down your retouching time in particular. So we're gonna go straight over to the portrait retouching tab, which is just over here. And we're now going to start adjusting some of those features. So with the blemish removal tab, that's the one just up the top here. And we do have the option to adjust freckles and acne as well. So if you're wanting to remove some of the freckles on the face, which personally I rarely ever do, but depending on the type of photo you're working on, you might need to do that. But I am actually just going to move this slider up and it is going to start to remove some of the blemishes. So you can see how easy that was. It was literally just moving that slider up and you can see how easy that is to remove them. Now, obviously I like to have a very natural approach to my work, so I'm not going to be removing too much of the skin texture and I'm not gonna be removing a lot of the pores on the skin tone. So we're really just gonna be very minimalistic with this tool. So I'm just going to maybe move it up a little bit like that. So if I go before, after, you can see it's really just helped remove the emphasis away from some of those blemishes. I'm also going to move the freckle slider down because I really don't need that. And it's just gonna bring back a couple of the little freckles there that I wanna keep on the face. And you can then adjust how much of the acne you do want to remove here. I am just going to leave it at 100 for now. So I'm just gonna move the freckle and acne slider up a little bit further just to kind of soften those areas. Now we can move this at any point so we can come back to it and adjust it accordingly then. And just going over to this icon here, you can see there's a little icon here for manual tuning. So this actually allows you to unmask any areas that you don't want to be affected by the sliders that we're currently using. So you can actually just paint onto the mask just by using the minus one and you can paint back by using the plus, but that will mean that this area that you've painted over won't be affected by the sliders that we have been utilizing. But for now, we're not going to be doing any adjustments here. So you can just click cancel. And now we'll be moving on to the next slider, which will be under skin retouching down here. And you have the option for smoothing the face. Now, again, I do like to have a very natural approach to my images, so I'm not going to go too heavy handed with this slider, but this is essentially the dodging and burning aspect of the skin retouching process. So I'm going to move this up a little bit, but not too far, maybe about to around 50. And if we do a quick before and after, you can see how much that's changed just by using two sliders it's actually done a really, really good job. There's just a few little things that I'm going to bring back, like a couple of the little freckles here that you can see because I like to keep them intact. But if we move this down, you can get a little bit more of a natural appearance as well. So I'm just gonna quickly go back up to the freckle and acne section and just bring this down a little bit more so those other freckles show through just a little bit more there. And let's just do a quick before and after so you can see that we've still kind of made a really good impact here with a lot of the blemishes. I am going to zoom in though, and we do have the healing tool just at the top here. I'm gonna make sure that the size isn't too big. And then we're just going to use it over a couple of the blemishes here. So that's a really easy, quick process, just removing some of the blemishes here and just up the top here as well. And we'll press okay. And now that we've removed those blemishes, I'm actually going to go back down to the dodge and burn section here under skin retouching. And we can probably just up this a little bit more. And you can see here, if I go before and then after, you can see how much of a difference that's made. And the dodge and burn aspect of this has really been just so easy to apply. Like usually dodge and burn for me, if I was doing a beauty image, that is at least going to take me uh, around half an hour to do. This has taken me all of a couple of seconds just to move the slider around and kind of get that really good base for the skin tone. Now, again, I'm just gonna go quickly up to the freckle and acne section. I'm going to go to the manual tuning option that I spoke about before. And we're actually just going to unmask just this part here of the freckles, only because I just want them to show through and make sure that they're not going to be covered at all by any of the sliders. So let's press okay. And you can see now that they're back, it's a little bit more natural looking, which is definitely the vibe that I love for my portrait retouching. So just a quick before and after here. So this is the before 
and then this is the after and this has all been achieved literally within a couple of minutes now usually for me if I was doing this I'd be spending a lot more time on the skin retouching but now let's delve into a couple of the other tools here in Evoto so you can see here under the dodge and burn option for smooth face skin you've also got the face skin smoothing option down here so you can actually just pump that up a little bit if you want more of a softer effect with the skin I'm not really a fan of having anything that looks too filtered but this is a very good option if you've got really really textured skin that you just want to soften just a little bit so I'm just gonna move this down now going into the skin texture option as well there's a couple of really interesting features here so you can actually add a little bit of skin texture or make it stand out a little bit more and you can do this by using some presets like matte satin and dewy so matte is the one that I've got currently selected and I'm actually just gonna pump the texture up just a little bit more to show you here just on the cheek so just a before and after of how that sort of makes that stand out a little bit more. And you can also up the clarity to make it stand out even more. But I am going to bring that down just a little bit. If you want more of a glossy effect, you can move that up. But we're going to keep that a little bit more on the matte side. Now moving on to skin color correction. Now you can see here that there's a few new features uh, with unifying the face and unifying the body. So let's try the unifying the face complexion slider. So I'm just going to move that up. And you can see how much of a difference that's specifically made around the under eye area. You can see that it's kind of removed that blue hue from under the eyes. So moving that back down again, you'll see exactly what I mean when it refreshes. But you can see that this was the original and then this is the after. So you can see it really makes those really nice subtle differences there. Now you can also be a little bit more specific with the skin tone color correction here as well. You can choose a specific color to really unify the skin tone. So let's go with this one here and obviously moving this down a little bit because that is a little bit too bright. So this kind of is brightening the skin tone a little bit more and maybe we can go with this one here because I feel like the undertone is a little bit better suited on this one. So we'll just make sure that that's really sitting quite low there. And there's also an option here for skin radiance. So if we push that up just a little bit, you'll see that it really gives it that nice little bit of a glow. So I'm just going to leave it there at around five. So let's do a quick before and after while we're here. So before, after, before, after. Now there's just another little feature here that I am going to adjust and it's just a bit of the dry skin just in the corner of the nose here and then you also have the option for using the patch tool and the clone stamp tool. So I'm actually going to use the clone stamp tool for this. I'm going to make my brush size just a bit smaller. Now holding down alt on your keyboard or option for a Mac will help you to select portions of the skin tone to then run over this section and essentially replace it. And I'm actually going to make sure that my opacity is set quite low for this and the hardness is quite low as well. And then I'm going to hold down alt and then just select over here and then just really gently run that over this section. And the same on the other side, just in the corner there. And then I'm also going to go back over to the healing brush tool and just do another quick few little blemish removals. And let's press OK. So let's do a quick before and after. Before, after, before, after. Now let's also move on to the stray hair removal option, which is one of my favorite options in this program. I think it's one of the most tedious things. I've said it before on my channel so many times that I think one of the worst things I find when retouching is removing stray hairs, and it's one of my least favorite things to do. So this slider has literally become a lifesaver for me. So if we go down to hair, You'll see here that you have the option to remove stray hairs. Now I really want you to look in this area here when I do this because it's going to be like magic happening before your eyes. I'm going to move this slider up now and immediately they are gone. So I often use this tool and I think about all of those times that I have literally spent hours working on hair and removing stray hairs 
in my room on my computer, just, just spending absolutely hours doing this. So if I move that back, you'll be able to see what a difference that's made. So before and after, incredible. So I'm gonna actually do another before and after and you'll be able to see a lot of the stray hairs that have actually also been removed within the hair as well, which is why I love this tool. It's not actually just for kind of like the exterior of the hair, it's also in the interior parts as well. So before, and you can see a lot of them that are still kind of hanging around here and here, after, before, after. And now let's zoom in as well to this section here because you'll be able to see even more stray hairs. Before, after, before, after. Now you can really go as heavy as you want with this slider. I can actually push it further and it will remove even more, but I don't wanna to go too far with it. I just wanna keep that kind of natural effect. So I'm going to move that down a little bit more. And then if there's any that it has missed, you can go into using the healing tool again. So for example, there is just one here that I can see. We're gonna remove that. And just there. And there's just one here that's very fine across the face. And otherwise, that looks pretty good. But if I just do a quick before and after again, you'll see how much of a difference that actually makes. It's crazy how much it actually does remove so many of those stray hairs. And like I said, if there's any sections that it has missed, you can go into the healing tool here and then go into the clone stamp tool and then just make the brush size a bit bigger, making sure opacity and hardness is quite low and then select by using alt or option and then just start to paint over those other sections just to kind of blend it a little bit more. But Voto has basically done all of that hard work for me. And we'll click OK. And before, after, before, after. And I'm just going to sneak in another image here just while we're on this particular panel. And one of Avoto's newest features is the glasses glare removal. And I really just had to show you all this. If you photograph any types of shots that do have glasses in them regularly, this is a really, really cool feature. So you can see here there's quite a bit of glare on the glasses. And if I just slide this up a little bit, you'll see that the glare starts to disappear. And if I move it the whole way up, it just completely removes it. I mean, how good is that? It's really, really quick. And again, just with one slider, it can go from this to this. A really, really cool feature. And one more thing that's actually really crazy as well, that's very easy to use, is just on the eye section, you can actually go to the remove red vein slider. And if I pull that up, you'll see that it softens these dramatically. So if I pull that up, up even more, so moving that up even more, it just completely softens them so much. And I'm not gonna actually remove all of them because I like having a little bit of texture still there and a little bit of redness because otherwise if we remove it all, it is gonna look a bit strange and I like to have a little bit still there. Another cool little feature in Avoto is if you go to the eyes section, you can actually choose your own catch lights, which I think is really cool. And if I just click on one of these, you'll see that it just kind of adds a little bit more glistening kind of sparkle to the eyes. And this is really good if you've found that there's not much of a catch light on the day that you're actually working with your model or if you've got any catch lights that don't look quite right, you can actually just adjust them by using something like this. So I think I'm actually going to maybe use these ones here because I really like how that looks and I like how this one looks too. So I actually might use this one because it even has a little bit more of a natural vibe. So again, just going before and after, before, after. And now we're actually gonna be moving on to color grading. So if I go back to our original tab just up here, which is the color adjustments tab, you'll see that it reverts back to our original image before the skin retouching. But what I'm actually going to do is choose one of these AI color looks that will really help to color grade the image. And you can really adjust how heavy some of these looks will actually appear on your image. So let's just go through some of them. So neutral, Vivid, pure love. So you can really adjust these, make them a little bit less intense. I'm actually really liking neutral at the moment, but we'll keep going through. So olive green. I kind of like the contrast of the warm and cool with this one. 
I like the warmth of this one. I actually really like this kind of effect actually and I'm going to move this slider just down a little bit though so it's not too heavy. And we will go ahead and remove some of the redness just that's appearing in the skin tone. But otherwise, I really like the warm colors coming through the hair there and even a little bit through the makeup. So I like that look with it. Now, if we go back to our portrait retouching tab, you'll be able to see how this all looks with the skin retouching as well. So you can see that it actually has a really nice effect. So if I go before and then after, it kind of retains some more of that warmth that we originally had without going too cool on the skin tone either. And if we go back to color adjustments, we can actually adjust how some of this looks. So bringing the highlight up a little bit more will give a little bit more dimension to the image. We can also just bring it back a little bit with the coolness, just a little bit, and the green over just a little bit with the tint too. And going into the HSL as well, we can go into saturation and bring the reds down if we feel that they're becoming a little bit too prominent in the image so we can just bring them down a little bit and you can adjust some of the color grading options down below here with the palettes and the blending options but for now I really like how this is looking and the only thing that I'm probably going to tweak from here on out is going to be the skin tone so going back to skin retouching we can then adjust if we feel that anything has gone too far before we export the image or before we start editing some of the other images in our set so if we go down to dodge and burn we can move this down just to bring back even more of that texture. So going before, after, before, after. And we can also move the skin radiance down a little bit. So I really like how this is looking now. So before, after, before, after. I might even go back to the color options and just adjust the contrast a little bit more. We'll bring that up just a little bit. I'm actually going to move the AI Unify body complexion just up a little bit because that's actually going to help blend the skin tone into the neckline there. And that quite often happens to be an issue with a lot of portraits is that that will tend to be a different color. So you can actually move that up and it will help to kind of adjust that. So before, after, before, after. Now the best thing about making adjustments in Avoto is you can easily save presets and sync them with sets of images. So for example, if I wanted to save this preset, I could simply go down to save preset here and let's rename this model test one. And we can choose a group for these presets. So let's choose test shoots and save. Now you can click here on the drop down and you can choose what the preset is actually going to contain. So we really do have a combination of things going on. We have portrait retouching, we have colors and AI tools. So we're going to leave it as combination for now. And you can also specifically tick on and off here what you want to adjust with the preset. But for now we're leaving all of that in there and let's click save. And now if we navigate just up to presets here, you can go to my presets and there's our group and our preset just here. So if I go to another image, click on model test one, you'll see that that has been applied really easily and there's barely anything that I have to do to this image with the exception of maybe just using the healing tools on a couple of the blemishes. That is pretty much it. Everything else has been done for me. So before, after, before, after. Now, if I wanted to sync this with a set of images, so for example, if I wanted to apply this to more than one, I can actually hold down shift and clicking on a lot of the other images that I want to sync this preset with, I can then just simply click on sync. And again, we're going to keep all of those adjustments intact. So clicking save, and then this will now apply it to all of the images. So now if we go to some of these other photos, you can see here that the preset has also been applied to these. And I virtually have very, very little retouching to do on these images at all now. So before, after, before, after. 
The other new feature that I really love in Avoto is that you can actually import XMP presets and .cube files as well. So this makes it really easy if you do have any presets that are in XMP format, which I'm assuming a lot of you probably do, and I know that I've got a lot as well, you can actually easily import them by going to the presets tab and then going to the little plus here and you can go import preset and then local files. So for example here, I've got my own presets that I sell on my website. And if I go to neutral and click open, under the clean presets group, it's actually added the neutral presets. So navigating to another image, I'm then going to apply the presets. So just by simply clicking on it, and then it will actually allow you to do that and adjust the intensity of it as well. So it's just as easy as that. You can easily put your .cube and XMP presets into Avoto. And just to show you a few more of the features that I feel are really, really great in Avoto and that will really help you save time and just easily add that little extra X factor to your work. I feel like some of these features will be really, really helpful for a lot of retouchers out there. So we've got a new photo here to demonstrate some of these features. Now we're on the portrait retouching tab at the moment and you'll see that under facial expression, there's also the option for gentle smile. Now, I don't know how many photos I've taken in the past where I have photographed a portrait where the photo would basically be perfect if only the model had had a slight uh, smile or a slight kind of little hint of expression, but maybe there's not enough expression in the image. So I find that this slider is really good for that. Now, if we move it up a little bit, you'll see that it just adds that little bit more expression to the shot. And if we just go before and then after, obviously you don't have to go too high with this. I usually just like to make it a very minimal thing, but I have literally done this with liquify before. If I've found that I've had a photo that's virtually like 99% of the way there, it just needs a little bit more expression in the photo. I have sat there for a while with liquify trying to do this. Uh, I find that this slider does it really, really easily. So quick before and after, before, after, before, after. So it really just does a good job of adding a little bit more expression into the image. Now you can also go down to the eyes section here and you can brighten them up really easily. So if I move these sliders up a little bit, you'll see that both eyes are way brighter now. So just going back down again and then back up, it lightens the sclera, which is the whites of the eyes as well. Really, really easy to do this. You're not spending 15 minutes trying to get your dodge and burn layers up to do this. It is a really, really simple uh, slider that you can use and you can go really as far as you want with this. You can also adjust the sclera and the iris. So if you want less brightness in the iris or more, you can do that. Or if you want less in the sclera and you can also pump up the eye reflection as well and also the iris flare, which is the middle part. So we're gonna move that one up just a little bit. Now the next feature is one that I think you guys are gonna love because I know that as a portrait photographer in studio, this has been a common issue, especially as a beginner, if you're using fabric backdrops or anything that's going to crease or that needs a cleanup. So for example, on this image here, you can see that the creases are apparent in the backdrop. Now, if I just wanted to soften these a little bit more and not make them so apparent, I can simply click on the clean solid backdrop and then it does remove quite a bit of the creasing and really makes it look a lot smoother. So before, after, before, after. And it does such a good job of removing that without me having to sit there and clone stamp that area for too long because I've had to do that before and it's extremely annoying when you have to sit there for a long time doing that. Now you can also do background enhancements. So if you want to kind of brighten it up a little bit, you can do that. So before, after, before, after. The other cool thing is you can actually really easily change the backdrop. So if I just go to transparent here, it will actually just completely cut out the image, which is done in all of two seconds flat, which is amazing. But you can actually go through and start adding some other backdrops. Now, depending on whether you want to stick with the same color scheme or whether you want to try something different. For example, I'm just going to go down to the reds here because we had red. So if I wanted more of a backdrop that sort of didn't have all the creasing in that, I wanted something a bit more with a gradient. 
pigment, I could do that. Or maybe a green to kind of contrast with the orange or a blue. It's really up to you, but depending on the image you have will depend on how some of these backdrops will appear. But for the most part, I have tested this out on several images before and I found that it does create a really cool effect. You'll just need to also remember that if you're changing the backdrop, really look at the color toning in the skin. And if there's any color cast from the current backdrop that you're using, you might need to just adjust that in post. But in looking at some of these, it will actually help you really make your process a little bit more streamlined, especially when it comes to backdrops. Backdrops are pretty hard to retouch, uh, especially if you haven't photographed it the way that you want it to be in the first place. So using programs like Avoto to actually change the backdrop makes things a lot easier. You can also change the edge adjustments here. So depending on how much of the hair you want, to be present. I'm just gonna leave it at zero for now though. And you can also go to a section called My Backdrops and add in backdrops that you want to add in. So even if you've got a particular backdrop that you wanna photograph in a file, and then you can then upload this and use it as a base for some of your backdrop replacements, I think is a really, really cool idea. The other option you can use for adjusting your solid backdrops as well is the color banding removal. So if I click on that, it's really going to help remove any color banding that does appear uh, in the image. Usually this happens on backdrops that have a little bit more of a really apparent gradient. So from dark to light or vice versa. But in this instance, it's actually just removed some more of those wrinkles. Now, if I really wanted to in this particular image and I didn't want any wrinkles at all, I could literally just go into the healing section again, choose the clone stamp tool. And now that Avoto has done the bulk of the work for me, I can just sample and start painting over this section here, you can up the opacity. And let's click OK. And before, after, before, after. So quickly going on to another image, the sky replacement tool is quite similar to how the headshot backdrop changer works as well. So you can actually just click on recommended and you can start choosing some of the skies to fit into your photo. Now, obviously that is a little bit too high with the opacity, but if we bring that down a little bit, you'll see that it still has a fairly natural effect. Now we can go through some of these and choose the one that really looks the best. And instead of having a really overexposed sky, you can instead have something that looks a little bit more moody or kind of adds a little bit more to the photograph. So especially if you're not taking multiple exposures, like most of the time I am not, especially when it comes to portraits, but you can see with some of these options, they still do give a really natural kind of effect, or you can just go for a gradient if that's what you prefer. But I think something like this actually looks pretty natural or even something like that. So again, you can just adjust the sky opacity if you don't want it to look as obvious. There's also more options to adjust the sky and even the human and scenery adjustment here. So if you actually up this and this will allow the scenery color to actually match the sky and it will give it a little bit more of a kind of a wash of color over the image. Same as the human color, it just kind of blends that in a little bit more to the sky. So if we go back to recommended and we choose another you can see that it just gives it that little bit more of a natural effect with the coloring. Now, another one of my favorite features in Avoto actually has to do with retouching clothing. So if we go into clothes and accessories, you have the option to de-wrinkle clothing, which I absolutely love because again, like backdrops, like any other clothing that has wrinkles that, or fabric that needs to be removed, it's just so tedious to actually do this. And if we just simply move this slider up, you'll see that it immediately softens those wrinkles. So before, after, and you can really move this all the way up if you want. And even like moving it all the way to the top here, oh my God, I can't actually believe how natural that looks because this kind of retouching takes so long to do. So before, after, before, after. It's just incredible. I love it. It's probably one of my favorite tools in Avoto and 
especially for if you do any e-commerce retouching, things like the backdrop removal and backdrop changer, and even the de-wrinkle clothing option, they are just like actual game changers when it comes to retouching because that's the kind of stuff that just is so tedious and will take up so much of your time to do on each individual image. So I really feel like this option is just amazing. And there's the option here as well to remove fine wrinkles. So if you don't want as many of them removed, you can move that down. I'm gonna leave that up. And you can also remove coarse wrinkles, which again, you don't have to have all the way up, but for now, I'll just leave it as is. You also have the option now for tethered shooting with Avoto. So I find that that's a really, really great option to have. I'm always looking for new options when it comes to tethered shooting, since other programs can be quite slow or laggy. And I really love having something, especially when I'm working on commercial shoots that I can easily show to a client uh, right there on the spot, especially when it comes to color grading or a bit of skin retouching, even just to show them how things can look as a final product. And Avoto AI is the perfect program Program to do that because obviously you can easily do some of that retouching with sliders and show your clients on the spot how things are going to look. So I think that that's a really great option to have Evoto for tethered shooting. But all in all, I'm really happy with how Evoto is fitting into my workflow now. And I've just overall been really surprised at how easy and seamlessly everything works in the program. I've definitely been looking for something like this for a while now where I can integrate it for a lot of my client work, especially for a lot of my high workload clients where I do have a lot of images that I need to retouch and for very short deadlines, this is the perfect tool to be using. I think it's just one extra option that you have in terms of editing and one extra option that you have as a photographer to add into your process. And I really enjoy the simplicity that does come along with a Voto. But overall, I'm really, really happy with how this photo turned out. And I'm really happy with how, as I mentioned, Evoto is fitting into my workflow. So just another quick before and after on this first image, this is the before and then this is the after. Thank you so much for watching this video today. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, make sure you do, because I'll be posting a lot more videos in future. Let me know down in the comment section below if you've tried Avoto and what you thought of it. Did it save you time? Because I know for myself, it definitely has saved a lot of retouching time. And also just a quick reminder that if you'd like to try out Evoto AI for free, there is a link in the description box below, which is offering 30 free credits. Feel free to let me know in the comment section section below what you'd like to see next on my channel or if you'd like to see more videos of Avoto because I'd love to do them in future. But thank you so much as always for watching and I'll see you in the next video.